My research group tends to focus on an industrial problem and then looks at which, which competing technologies might play a role or, or methods might play a role in solving those problems. So in the Internet of Things space, we, we, we haven't got an Internet of Things research project program, but we have several programs that will make good use of Internet of Things. So one with a major um, uh, aircraft manufacturer, looking at working with them on how we gather data within their supply chain about the behaviour of their suppliers and their delivery systems. And, in, and actually at the moment what we're doing is making use of openly available data that maybe just put up onto the internet. But you can imagine that if we actually had access to a far more organised information source through an internet things mechanism, we could immediately begin to get some value out of that in terms of the way they manage their production operations. So that's one area. In second, the project uh, program areas in around into what we call the intelligent logistics. So there, what we're t trying to do is to work on new ways, new offerings for logistics providers. So you're probably familiar with the way, for example, Amazon will offer a standard or a premium service. And the frustrating thing is, you offer you pay for the premium because you need it at a certain time, and it all, often comes almost you know too too quickly. Or you pay for a stand and it doesn't come exactly when you wanted it. So what we're looking at is way of more flexible offerings where you might pay up front for standard, but you actually buy a possibility of interfering with the order later on to speed it up. And in order to do that, I've got to have a really accurate grip on not only where my order is at a given time, but on the state, for example, the traffic systems upstream and downstream where the order is. So I can predict, ah, I can tell my order's not going to get there on time and trigger an express delivery that will, will pick up my order and speed it up. And I want all that to happen automatically. So at the moment, we're, we're looking at mechanisms which will help us to gather that data. There isn't a mechanism, but the IoT, once some of the infrastructure is put into place, will certainly be very supportive of that. We do a lot of work in this area called disruption management and uh, we actually thought 20 years ago when we started working in disruption management that we'd be out of business in a year or two because we've solved all the disruptions but for everyone we solve there's a new disruption coming through and it's not for bad reasons, it's not for problems with the organisation, it's that for example uh, rush orders become increasingly valuable and so a company wants to be able to disrupt what it's doing right now to be able to make a rush order. So if you want to do that, then what you've got to do is have a sense of, if I'm going to prioritise a rush order, I might need to borrow some parts from another uh, order I'm producing. Therefore, I need to know where are the inbound parts that are going to support that order when I go back to the, the order I've just taken the parts from. And so having access to not only what's going on in my, my production operation, but into my warehouses, my distribution centres, even into my suppliers' inbound delivery systems, is really valuable in terms of being able to manage disruptions.